children, and then my encounter with Jesus in the most miraculous way. Pray for family members, and might come to know a spiritual life deeper and more valuable. Pray for our parish, that we might grow. Pray for anything else that comes to mind in your heart and mind. But please, now is the time to pray.
Please join in singing our opening hymn number 310 on the Breaking Bread Hymnal, Table of Plenty, number 310.
call us always to be ready to listen to one another within our families. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to act truthfully and lovingly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You empower us to forgive one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Give us our sins, our poor choices, our lack of action in his name. And may he bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it as Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples did ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in a like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said this to him a third time. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go to where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. What a great day God has given us to celebrate this first Holy Communion. What a great day. Could have been rainy, cloudy, could have had snow. But he gave you this day, bright and sunny and warmer as the day goes on. Somebody told me it's going up to 70. Is that true? Not many weather people here. <laughs> Trust me, they say it's going up to 70. It's a good thing. Doesn't do much for the pollen, though, does it? I don't know about you, but it's heavy for me. Well, today we celebrate your opportunity that God has given you, children, to receive Jesus in a very unique and special way. The real presence is there in the bread. The bread is consecrated by the priest who is me today. And then you have Jesus to nourish your soul. You eat that bread and it nourishes your humanity. 
hard to figure it all out, isn't it? You just have to trust. Trust that your mom, your dad understand it as best they can. And they know it's the best thing in the world for you. So they're helping you today. And this is a, a wonderful day. It's, it's great to be present here with you. Um, I've been excited about it for the last couple of weeks, knowing that all your family and friends will be here too, and uh, celebrating with you, and you're probably going to have a party afterwards. And um, It's been a long tradition for me to celebrate the First Communion. And I think even uh, uh, in, in, in this group, one of you has a parent, mom, who was, uh, when I was in South Peter, received her sacraments when I was there too. So she's just a child still in many ways, but I've aged tremendously. And so it's, it's a real connection always. It's always a great connection if you take the time to listen and to learn. Can I tell you a story? Simple story. It's about this, this young lady who was not happy in life. She was being twisted and turned, she thought, in every way. She didn't think that anybody liked her. She thought she was being taken advantage of at her job not being paid enough, putting in a lot of hours of work. It just, nothing was working out for her. So she thought. And she wanted, she wanted a relationship with God. But she didn't know how to get it. And one day she was, it was early evening. The sun was going down. She was walking along Main Street in her town. And most of the store had, they have those great big picture windows. So you can see what's going on inside. And if you're inside, you can see what's going on outside. And they're usually pretty big glass. And uh, she's, she stopped for a second because she caught a glimpse of something that she thought she, thought she saw. She's looking now full on in the window. And she thinks she sees Jesus there. And she wants his help. She, she's so desperate to have the presence of God in her life. She starts banging on the window. Jesus, I'm here. I need your help. I want to be a friend. Please, please. And she was kind of making a scene. People were getting a little nervous, but she didn't care. She said, it's now or never I get to know God. And as she got louder and louder, all of a sudden, with that reflection in the window, and what she thought was Jesus right there before her, she heard a voice over her left shoulder. The voice said, so loud. I'm right here for you. She turned and lo and behold, there he was, risen. Hallelujah. She thought the glass was keeping him from keeping her from him. But you need to understand that there's never anything in the way of you and your relationship with God except yourselves. God is always there for you. Always ready to answer your prayer. Always wanting to give you guidance and help, always inviting you to follow him like this gospel says. And he says, I want you to know my love for you. 
He asks Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter each time says, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus says, basically, he says, well, then prove it. Just prove it. And how do we prove it? If we love God, we go to church. If we love God, we go to church to honor him and to receive Eucharist, that incredible gift about to be given to us. And if we are going to be his child, if we're going to come to know God, then we need to pray. We need to take time each day to slow down the craziness. Anybody got any craziness in their life? Just ask God to pat us on the back and help us to learn how to be closer to Him. If we're going to follow Jesus, then we also need to be good people. Do good deeds. What are some good deeds that you can do for other people? Anybody got any ideas? Yeah. Yeah, help your friend out. He fell down. What a great thing to do. What else can you do as a nice deed for other people? Anybody else? Yeah. Someone else. Someone being mean to someone else. If someone's being mean to someone, Stand up for that person who's being treated wrong and tell the other one, it's not a nice thing to do. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, what else can you do that's really a good deed? You can hold the door open for people like me. <laughs> I think from the parents. So you're, you're doing a good job. You need to remember that you're in control of your children's lives. Uh, don't let anybody else take control. Make sure that you give them the values of Jesus and of your Catholic faith. Make sure that you teach them what is right and wrong. Make sure you teach them what the gospel teaches. And love one another as I have loved you. You parents, you're not unlike any other generation. 
We always think when it's us in the midst of it all, that nobody else had to cope with this. This is so incredible, and that's, a, that's not true. Every generation has their own challenges, but typically the challenge is the same. Stay on the right path, even if it's difficult. Don't give up the ship. Be brave. Be kind. Be helpful. Reach out and help those who are in need. And you know, if you do all of that and more, as Jesus asks you to do, your life is going to be full. And your children are going to be amazing adults. But if you don't do that, and they're not even going to know who they really are. They're going to be who other people molded and fashioned. I was telling you, uh, asking the questions on the, uh, when we had the, the, the banquet of our life Tuesday night with pizza. <laughs> and I said, how many of you have your own teeth? Those who didn't put up their hands, I said, well, whose do you have? <laughs> and I said, how many of you have your own nose? Ah. And how many of you have your own feet? And toes? And knees? And elbows? And head? And ears? They're all yours, right? Unique and wonderful as God prepared them. And hopefully, you'll have them, especially the chief, things like that, hearing and all that, well into my age. Long, long time from now for you. And, and, and if you take good care of them, you'll have it all by the time you reach 42. <laughs> You thought I was 28. What a good guy. But it goes the same for spiritual life. You know what a spiritual life is? A life with Jesus directing you. Whether you do yoga, or you run, or you sit at home in your rocking chair and eat popcorn, God calls you to a spiritual life. A life of prayer, hope and love and service. He asks you to be best friend to him. And all of your life he'll be there for you. And it's quite a journey, isn't it, grandparents? How many grandparents do we have here today? Want to stand for a minute? Just the grandparents. You did a good job. Nice job. <laughs> they, they learn from you. We pass it on generation to generation, don't we? We do. Do we have any great grandparents here today? Please stand. Great grandparents. You really work hard. Yeah. Mm. Do we have any blood parents here today in this children? Blood parents? Thank you. So many times uh, in this culture that we have where we move all over the world, uh, God parents are close to you at baptism, and then two years from now they're in Hawaii, <laughs> or they're in South America, or they're in Europe for studies or whatever. It's a good show today. And when you were called to be godparents, you were asked to be faithful to the word. 
to give a good example, to be prayerful and helpful in service, to love one another. So thank you all, great-grandparents, grandparents, godparents, and all of you who have had a special relationship with these kids. For they need as many people standing with them, teaching them the right ways to live and to celebrate life. There are a lot of choices out there today that are not healthy. And today, we want them to be as healthy as possible. So, in a most difficult several years, you've hung in there. You've made the right choices. You've said the right things. You've tried hard. And it might not all have been perfect, but we also heard in that reading today that God will take care of the rest if we just try. So, to sum it all up, go to church. Otherwise you forget what it's all about. Catholics go to church. Make room for God. Be prayerful. Give back. Don't just take. Give back. Hold the door open for someone. Help someone up who's fallen. Defend a friend. Make sure you do the right choices in life. And if you do those things, you're going to be amazing. Just amazing. So, thank you all. Let's pray. Lord, we 
thank you for light and love, for family, for bonds of love, for ability to be your people, and so we pray.
our gifts and are ready, let us ask the Lord, who is our God, to accept this sacrifice at my hands. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord who is our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Taking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope Francis and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep, who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Richard, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
uh, May 1st. What happened in February and March? It just flew by. But May is the certainly the month of First Holy Communion, but it's, it's in the church. May and October uh, are time when we honor uh, Our Lady, the Mother of Jesus. And uh, we do her honor as a, a great example of a way to live and follow the Lord and His directness and His love for us and share that love. And so today we have um, Juliana and Anthony who are going to uh, bring forward uh, the gift of
would insist that you actually look at that and think about who you are and why you're here today. How you need to make a uh, choice uh, of, uh, of what's most important in your life. And if soccer is the most important, then, then shame on you. Uh, if uh, baseball, which has just started this past week, is number one, then shame on you. There's a lot of opportunity. There are four different times of the weekend that you can come to church and celebrate here. And you need to do that. If you're wondering why you feel scattered, tired, obstinate, um, taken advantage of, whatever, it's because you haven't developed a spiritual
Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to let the kids go first. Okay. They'll fall, and then everybody else. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Back closing in, number 552.